Welcome to Diary of a Sheep Dairy Farmer, where we talk all things dairy sheep, from breeding to lambing to milking and everything in between and outside. I'm your host, Becca, owner, operator, and glorified farmhand of Hidden Hollow Sheep Dairy. Welcome back, guys. I hope you had a great week. We have finally put the cold behind us, and for the last few days, we've had rain and fog, and honestly, I'm not even mad about it. It has been melting the snow, which we need if I'm ever going to get the fence put up that I took down several weeks ago. Then my sheep can go back out on pasture. Right now, they are stuck in what we call the feedlot. It's basically just a holding pen that on good years when it's not muddy and mucky and lots of rain and lots of snow can usually hold about a hundred head of sheep. I've got about 200 and right around probably 250 head of sheep in there right now. They are not happy campers. So I have been trying to let them out into our ram pasture. The rams are not in there right now. They actually are in a different pen because I didn't want them anywhere near the girls while they are still in season and have any oopses this year. So I will just be really happy when the snow is gone, or at least gone enough that I can finish my fencing and put my sheep back out on pasture. I'm going to be completely honest. This is not the podcast I had scheduled for this week. I had planned to talk about predators that we as sheep farmers tend to deal with, but that has been bumped for... Yeah, maybe next week, maybe down the road. We'll see. Probably next week. So this week, I actually want to talk about sheep and the elements. I have been taking a lot of flack over on my YouTube channel about having my sheep out in the freezing temps and blizzard-like conditions. This episode should come out about the same time as the vlog I did about this topic. That way, if you don't watch my YouTube, you'll get the information here and vice versa. And please note... This is not me trying to defend myself and why my sheep aren't inside, but because honestly, I have pretty thick skin. I think we have a huge misconception about sheep and what they can withstand and about their wool. Let's get into it. So first and foremost, I want to say there is no right or wrong way when it comes to keeping your sheep indoors. Do what works for you. So why don't sheep need to be brought in out of the element? Honest answer? And the shortest answer, they have wool. I know we have all seen the sheep farmers who house their sheep year round. I noticed this a lot in Canada and I'm not sure if it's because they don't have the land, if it's a predator issue or if it's just a convenience thing. I follow about five or six Canadian shepherds between YouTube and Instagram, and it seems they all tend to keep their sheep inside. On the other hand, I follow quite a few YouTubers over in Ireland and Scotland, as well as on Instagram, and they prefer to keep their animals, their sheep, outside like 99% of the time. Honestly, I think the only time I've ever seen them inside, sometimes when they're lambing, Not always. They do a lot of pasture lambing. And then sometimes when they're just holding their sheep before they end up selling them. So here in the U.S., it seems to be about 50-50. In Idaho, we have what we refer to as rain sheep. They are meat sheep, usually a Rambouillet, pulled Dorset, Suffolk, some sort of the mix of all. And they spend about 99% of their time on the desert or in the mountains. They eat there, they live there, they lamb there. It is nothing for roads or highways to be shut down so flocks of sheep can cross into the next area for grazing during the spring, summer, and fall. They are out in the elements all the time, almost all year round. Even when they go back to their their winter pasturing, they are still outside. So dairy sheep, and, and, and I will admit, this is 90% of what I watch is meat sheep because there are so few dairy sheep people out there. Um, I think in the U.S. there's only like maybe a hundred sheep dairies. And I mean, granted, that is not counting all the homesteaders that have dairy sheep. If you add those in, it is a whole lot more. But dairy sheep are housed most of the time because keeping them indoors keeps them clean for milking. And not everyone has access to hundreds of acres to run their sheep on. But what if you don't have a barn? What if you just have your two sheep 
and a little lean-to that is mainly for keeping their feed dry. Will your sheep be okay out in the cold, the wind, the rain, and the snow? Yes. I really think there is a huge misconception about sheep and their wool. Sheep's wool is amazing. Let's start with rainy days, only because that is what I am looking out at my window as I record this. If you spread the wool on your sheep's back, you'll notice those little kinks and bends in the wool. Those kinks and bends are what traps the air to keep the sheep warm. The wool will absorb the air, trapping the moisture inside those fibers, creating heat, thus insulating the sheep. They do the same thing in winter. So we've all seen the pictures on Instagram of the sheep lying in the pasture with snow covering their backs. This is actually a good thing. If the snow is melting on their backs, there could be an issue. Sheep are not like cows and horses who you want to see the snow melting off their backs because it means their internal temperatures are warming them up to keep the snow off. Off them. I still have a hard time with this. I look at my sheep and I'm thinking, oh shoot, they have way too much snow on them. I am not feeding them enough. They are not heating themselves. I need to up their feed. I don't. That snow, the sheep are insulating themselves against the weather. That snow is not reaching down onto their skin. It's doing what it's supposed to do. There are only two reasons why I would bring my sheep into the barn in bad weather. One, if they are like newborn lambs or even maybe up to a week old that haven't acclimated to the weather. Yes, technically they are born with a wool coat, but they are still susceptible to that cold for the first 24 hours after birth, especially those first few minutes while mom gets them cleaned off of all the what I like to refer to as lamb juices. And until they get some colostrum and milk into them, they are not ready for the cold temperatures. Colostrum is so important for newborns. Does it matter if they are lambs, if they are goat kids, if they are uh, foals or calves? It is like detrimental to their livelihood if they don't get that colostrum. So as long as they get the colostrum and they are in a clean, dry place, newborns will do well even in cold weather. And by the time they're a week old, they're perfect. So the second reason I would bring my sheep into the barn in bad weather is if they were sheared. Now, I know not a lot of people are shearing their sheep in the middle of January, but I do actually know a few, um, and they do it in preparation for lambing. So whether you have meat sheep or dairy sheep, most of us try to shear our sheep before lambing. Though I will admit, in my world, it doesn't usually happen just because we lamb beginning in February and then tend to go through the end of March. And our barn is, it, our, our barn is a horse barn. It has stalls on one side, and where we lamb our sheep was a riding arena, or is a riding arena, that we have transformed into a sheep barn. So it is definitely not ideal, and it is also open on three sides. It's only got about a half wall on the, let's see, the north, the south, and the west side. And on the east side where the stalls are, there is a breezeway, so anytime you get an east wind or snow coming from the east, it fills up our barn. So it's not ideal, but it's what we have to work with. So our, our motto around here is use what you got. So if you do shear your sheep in the middle of January, when there are extreme temperatures going on, you definitely want to keep them inside until they acclimate to the colder weather. Um, I do know of a farm, a, a dairy farm, dairy sheep farm up in northern Idaho where it gets really, really cold. And they do shear their sheep in January in preparation for lambing. And they keep their sheep inside when the temperatures are below freezing and definitely at night when we know those temperatures can hit negatives. And so they have, they have figured out a system that works for them and it's, it's absolutely amazing. If I had their setup, I would probably do the exact same thing, but unfortunately I don't. So I just do the best I can with my sheep, which is why they usually don't get sheared until after lambing 
just because that's usually one when I can get a shear out here and two when the weather warms up enough that I can have them sheared without any serious issues. I think we try too hard to humanize sheep, any animal actually, just because we as humans can't handle the biting cold or snowy raining conditions doesn't mean your sheep can't. Sheep are amazingly made for crappy weather. Their wool is just, their wool is just amazing. There's no other word for it. But let's talk really quick about hot weather. We all do our best to shear our sheep before the summer gets here in all her heated, sweaty, lovely glory. But what benefits do shearing our sheep in the summer provide? Basically, the same principles apply. Wool helps maintain a dry environment on the sheep by absorbing the moisture from the air, including sweat. Yes, sheep do sweat, which helps keep them cool. When we shear our sheep, especially going into summer, we always make sure to leave about an inch of wool when it comes to shearing. And this seems to help them out in the summer. They aren't as prone to sunburn and they seem more comfortable than when we shear them short. Now I've read in a couple different places that shearing your sheep and leaving about an inch of wool is actually better for them, but I couldn't find anything that was like came from a vet or a school, like an animal science school or something that, that gave it teeth. You know what I mean? So I'm just going by what I know for my sheep and that they just seem to do better. And then same within the winter, like when we shear for uh, our breeding groups, when we shear the rams so that we can get the harnesses on them, we always try to leave an inch or two of wool on them because we are going, especially when we do our December, January breeding, the temperatures are, are quite, quite nasty. And they seem to do just fine leaving that inch or two on them, even when the temperature gets down to like negative numbers. So I think it's just a matter of how you make it work for you. So I know this is a short one. Like I said, it wasn't really my plan, but I just feel that people, especially people who one, don't have sheep or two, maybe they have sheep, but they don't quite understand how it, how wool works and how it keeps the sheep warm and comfortable. Even when you and I would be running for the first warm spot we could find. I just feel that there is not enough information out there for people to get a good understanding about what wool does. I'm sure, you know, I can't remember if it was a couple years ago where um, one of the animal rights were going around about, you know, if you shear your sheep, you're killing your sheep. And, you know, you just want to look at him and like, really? Because if I don't shear my sheep, I'm pretty sure they're going to get overheated and die in the summer. So I think that contributes a lot to the misunderstanding of what wool does for a sheep. I don't think there is any way to win because it doesn't seem to matter how much you talk about it, how much you educate people. There are still going to be those out there that are going to look at your beautiful picture of your sheep in the snowy setting with the snow falling on them and them laying there doing their cud content as can be and villainize you because you don't have them in a shelter or in a barn or yeah. And then if you do bring them inside, you know, then you have the other side that, oh, they should be out on pasture. Look at how unhappy they are. I see this a lot with my cattle dairy friends that they, when their cows are inside, they get villainized for not letting them be cows and be out on pasture. And, and it's just, it's a no-win situation. So I I think you just have to do what's going to be best for you and your situation and your knowledge. If you feel that bringing your sheep in in crummy weather is the best thing for you, do it. Absolutely do it. A lot of times what we do isn't necessarily for the animal's comfort, but for ours. Would I love to have all my sheep in the barn so that I didn't have to go out in the elements and feed them? Absolutely. Could I put them in my barn? Not a chance. <laughs> and not because I don't want to. 
But because my barn, like I said, it's not a sheep barn. It will maybe, maybe hold about a hundred, maybe 120 head of sheep. And that is like shoulder to shoulder at the bunks without anybody trying to kill one another by climbing over them trying to get to the feed. My barn issue is the fact that there is not enough headspace for the sheep to eat. So it doesn't matter how much I throw on the ground, they are still running over each other and jumping on each other trying to get to the hay. It's just not a risk I'm willing to take. So they are outside. They're being fed outside. They are completely content outside. Their wool's doing what it's supposed to do. It is not soaking up the mud. It is not soaking up the water. It is holding their temperature to where they can heat themselves and slough any of the crummy off. Does that make sense? Probably not. So anyway, I am going to call that quits here today. Hopefully next week we will be back sort of on schedule. (laughs) with another podcast and hopefully the one I actually had planned on predators. We'll talk a little bit about what you can encounter on your farm and ways to deter predators on your farm. I appreciate you being here and thank you for your support. I would be ever so grateful if you would leave a review or share this podcast with your dairy sheep loving friends. Anything to get the word out. As always, You can find me on Instagram at Diary of a Sheep Dairy Farmer. And if you want to follow the chaos around the farm, you can find me on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok at Hidden Hollow Sheep Dairy. Thanks for being here, guys. We'll talk to you again next week.